It's time for Inside Out 2. Alan and I saw it a few days ago. Mm-hmm. And this is the sequel to the... Was it wildly successful? It was mildly, wildly successful. It did wildly well. successful Pixar film. This is the follow-up. And a lot of people are saying it's a return to form. Pixar is back. Alan, can you tell us the, sto- the story <laughs> of Inside Out 2? <laughs> All right, so Inside Out 2, Riley, uh, a young uh, you know, young teen Riley, preteen Riley, uh, she is a uh, <clears throat> she is part of the championship hockey team for her league. Uh, they won the championship with her friends Bree and Grace. Uh, the three together are a powerful force. And after the championship game, uh, the head coach of Riley's upcoming high school decides, hey, you girls are great. Let's bring you to camp to hockey camp for the summer, and we'll see if you can make the team. Uh, The three are super excited. And uh, as Riley goes to bed that night, uh, we go into her mind, and there's our friends, uh, joy, uh, anger, sadness, uh, disgust, and fear. Uh, They're just doing their thing. And then all of a sudden, demo comes. And uh, Riley's headquarters is turned into puberty headquarters (laughs) because overnight, Riley starts puberty. And with puberty comes new emotions, uh, that being anxiety, ennui, embarrassment, and uh, and envy. That's right. And uh, look, it's big, big camp. Uh, Riley finds out that her two best friends are not going to the same school she is. She needs to make friends, and so summer camp is her time to uh, to get in good with the hockey team, especially its captain, uh, who she idolizes, and uh, and. Anxiety decides, uh, look, she needs to take over. Anxiety uh, realizes that if, uh, if Riley screws up the weekend, uh, her, her life is over. And when Joy tries to convince her that it's not going to be over, uh, Anxiety takes our gang, puts them in a jar, and sends them off into the vault uh, to never be seen again. And uh, that is our story. Will Riley make the team? Will Riley make friends? Will Riley keep her best friends who are no longer going to her school? Well, find out. Yeah, so there's two stories happening simultaneously. In her brain, Riley's emotions. So new emotions have been introduced. You know, uh, there's embarrassment and anxiety is the one that just takes over, which is Riley thinking about being stressed out about what might happen in the future. Yeah. It was like, oh no, I'm stressed out about all these things. They haven't happened, but they might happen. And and uh, anxiety has kind of made Riley very erratic in her behavior in the outside world. So yeah, the What's, I'll, the I'll brain, say, let me elaborate on that. Please. Joy Joy looks at the past, and Joy basically collects all the good memories that Riley has had, and so uh, it allows Riley to look back and see what fun she had growing up. Uh, anxiety, on their hand, uh, looks into the future at all the possible permutations of how life could go wrong, and uh, just builds upon that. And uh, that's that's kind of the, the 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 conflict we have in this story. Yeah. So those two stories are happening at once. They intersect. You see Riley acting strangely, like she kind of uh, betrays her old friends by trying to be cool in front of the new friends at the new school she's going to, which is very, very junior high behavior, very junior high to like, I'm too cool for you guys. Now I don't like, they have a whole conversation about this band, like some boy band. Mm -hmm. And she claims to not like them because it's not cool to like that band. So I thought it was very authentic to that stage of life. Mm-hmm. You know, which is like preteen moving to teen to high between high school and junior high, but it doesn't completely work. A lot of th- couple things. One is is hockey popular among <laughs> young girls? Are there female hockey leagues all over where it's a thing? I don't know that there is. I've never heard of it, but um, I'm sure it exists in Canada. Let's just say that. But this I'm, is not Canada. That's the problem. It's not this Canada. Is, this is San Francisco. Exactly. So in San Francisco, are there girls hockey leagues? 
where they're just super aggressive. Um, so that I didn't buy. And the other thing is, it's a, there were missed opportunities to me. When you're that age, you're just getting into boys, right? Or having feelings, potentially, uh, that involve, you know, uh, uh, sexual feelings. You know, very innocent at first. So none of that is dealt with at all. Uh, a couple of other things. Every time they would show a group shot, of like the girls, you know, Riley and her friends and Riley's friends. Riley is white and she has a black friend and an Asian friend. And yeah. the new yeah, Polly, huh? black, Polly, black and Asian. Yeah. Those are her. <laughs> and then they have, they have the new high school friends that are also, there is someone who's black. There's someone who's Asian. There's a girl that's Muslim who has the hajib or whatever. And you're like, the this job. is so, it's like a box of crayons. We want to be perfect diversity. Everything is there and represented. And it seems so, so on the nose. It's just, oh, and then the, 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 so that is just sometimes cringe. The, the, the motions you know, part, it's like the rules are all made up. I'm doing this. I'm grabbing this globe. I'm running down this thing. There was the uh, th there was a actually a really funny scene at the sarcasm, yeah, <laughs> which is literally a chasm where they would just say something and it would come off like really sarcastic. Like Alan, I I'd say Alan, I really like your new haircut, and then you hear them hearing it is like Alan, I really like your new haircut. <laughs> so I, I, that scene was funny. That was funny. So, um, but ultimately, and, and I hate to admit this at the end, it all, they pull the two storylines together and there's a moment at the end where Riley kind of realizes she's been acting erratically and, and it's, you know, compromised her friendships and her, her behavior has hurt her friends. And she comes to a realization about her, her behavior and, and it all kind of comes together, which yeah. I thought was a great moment. I got, I, I admittedly, I got choked up, but not like other, other Pixar movies. Like, Oh, that's really nice. That's a perfect story for that stage of life. Exactly for a girl who plays hockey, but it didn't feel universal. It felt like a lot of the humor never took risks. It never took risks. And Alan, I know you're the biggest Disney shill, the biggest yeah. Disney fan. Yeah. Although that, that money, that money spigot has, uh, has dried up. Yeah. It's dried up, but, but uh, so yeah. I'm very mixed on it. It had it, it, it came through in the end, but ultimately I was like, this is not even near the best of Pixar. It's not. People are going to say, other reviewers are going to say, Pixar is back. Pixar is back. It's the greatest thing since the last. No, this is very mid Pixar for me. Compared to of Lightyear, compared to Lightyear, this is so much better. Well, it's better than Lightyear. And the one thing I'll say, other than the diversity stuff that's so annoying, it's not particularly uh, woke, right? No, Which not, I know people get annoyed. It's yeah, not, it's I'll not, it's this. just not. Yeah, so, the, the only thing woke about it is her, her diverse friends. You know, I mean, which is whatever it's, it's, it's eye rolling, but Alan, yeah. I kind of gave you my thoughts. I want to hear what you think. Cause it gets to the point where, where Riley can only say, look, I can only have one Asian friend. Uh, so, yeah, it's so oh, weird. It's no, someone. it's sort of like she has these old, she has an old, uh, old friends that are black and Asian. She yeah. has new friends that are black and Asian. And <laughs> they, they all have, no, they all have, they all have a pink streak in their hair. Yeah. So then she adds a pink streak so she can fit in with all the no, girls. So my, my point is, is that she has a checklist of friends, you know, black, yeah. Asian, Latino. Yes. And when, she, when she checks one off, she can't have another one. That's, that's, that's how th this works. Um, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, it's not woke. Uh, everything we feared it would be. Uh, I mean, we'll talk about anxiety for a moment uh, in a moment, but 
everything you thought it would be in terms of woke and lesbians and whatever, it's not there. There's no romance. She doesn't fall in love with the, the coach uh, or with the captain. She idolizes her, but she doesn't fall in love with her. In fact, she's she's obsessed with an anime character, a male anime character. Um, and uh, and honestly, uh, having just gone through uh, this stage in life with my own kid, uh, oh. this felt very authentic to me. Uh, everything that happened here, I'm like, oh, I remember that. You know, I remember. <laughs> and um, because, you know, and look, I'll say this. Uh, it's safe. I, I think parents, uh, this is a great movie to take your kids to. I don't think you're going to have any problems. It's safe. Uh, you know, I, I was watching WDW Pro and he was he was not excited about the anxiety character. Uh, I think they I, I think it was important to have the anxiety character. I think they handle it wrong. Uh, the anxiety character is basically the villain in this movie. Um, yeah, she's the one who, who the kicks out the gang. Yeah, who kicks out yeah. the gang, who decides that, you know, she's the one who's going to run Riley. And it gets to the point where Riley has a panic attack uh, near the end of the film. And and it's very true to form in terms of how that happens. Um, I, I will agree in the sense that anxiety is not an emotion, but anxiety is something you have to manage, something you have to handle. And that's kind of the point of we as parents is to teach our children how do you deal with anxiety. And in this one, and, and a lot of times parents uh, will give their kids drugs. That's how they'll deal with anxieties. And in this movie, it, it doesn't do the drug route. It just realizes that there are more emotions uh, that can balance it out. There are memories that can balance it out. And then there's this idea that they bring into it uh, of beliefs, that, that these collections of memories create beliefs. And by creating strong beliefs, uh, you could handle anxiety. And so I think the message is, it, it may not be perfect, but I think it's good. And, uh, and I would recommend it to anyone who has, any parents of preteens and, uh, and older children. This is, this is a good movie. Um, I will say, though, not excited about the animation, not excited about the comedy. Uh, the animation felt small compared to the yes. original. The animation, uh, I don't know why it didn't, it just was it not, pop. it wasn't impressive. It yeah. wasn't impressive. And, I, and I'll tell you why. The, everything felt cramped. You know, when in the original one, you know, you go into HQ and you look way off into the distance and you see you see the world of, of Riley's mind. And it, it's it's vast and feels infinite. In this one, it just feels close. And um, and it just felt like that this was, it, you know, it's the difference between car, animation for television and animation for movies. This felt like animation for television. Um, nothing really popped. There's, there's a part where they're kind of... Uh, there's this giant mountain of memories and they're kind of rolling down it like an avalanche or a surf or something like that. It felt flat. This movie feels flat. There, there's no depth in this movie. Even the headquarters in the original, it felt bigger. It felt like, you know, one of these sixties apartments that just was vast and big with stairs. This one, it just felt like a, a small studio that they had shot in a small studio. Um, this is, I, I, you know, we'll go back to the D files. You know, they, it feels like they got rid of people who knew how to do this better. Uh, this movie does is not Pixar excellence. Um, yes. You know, and uh, it, it's just so you're just going to watch this. If you're a fan of the first one, you're going to watch it and you're going to wonder to yourself, why doesn't it feel as wonderful and special as the first movie? And, and that's the thing I, I locked on to. It, it's just uh, the world shrunk. And, uh, you know, th there was there was majesty and grandeur that came with the first one that that's missing in this one the second well, is the comedy uh the okay, comedy go, go, yeah, well, yeah. Can I give you a comment on that oh, yeah, real go ahead. Quick. one go real ahead. quick comic i know what you're gonna say because we talked after yeah. um it feels like the direct to vhs sequel mm -hmm. the inside out you yeah. know when they would do these cheap sequels <laughs> like cinderella 2 yeah. or bambi 2 lion or king lion two. king 2 like and I bought all those in the clamshell in the '90s. It feels like it's every at every level it's lesser than the original yeah. movie, and that's what this is. It's a direct to VHS or direct to VOD or direct to streaming sequel to Inside Out. It's passable and it's good, but doesn't even. And the thing is, you can't say that about Toy Story. Toy yeah. Story 
at least two and three up the ante. Yeah. Up the ante and continue the story of Andy and his toys. And, yeah. and you saw the evolution like, of the technology too yes. from the first Toy Story to Bugs Life, then just Toy Story 2. You saw how Pixar had evolved and grew as a company and their tech their technology. Not just technology, storytelling. Mm -hmm. I Toy Story 3. No. <laughs> there's a moment I'm getting chills thinking about it where I'm like, oh my god, they are all going to die. Yeah, they are all you know the moment I'm talking yeah, about. I do, I do and, know that moment. And I was like, don't cry, don't cry, <laughs> don't cry. I'm watching that scene, don't cry. And the fact that Pixar could do that and each uh -huh. thing, you know, like a one up that it's just the level of quality went up. This is not a rise in quality. It's fine. It's fine. But like I said, it's direct to streaming and it's it's okay. However, I'll say this. For girls at that stage of life, at 13, this is the perfect movie. It really is for that particular stage of life. I mean, you know, it really is great. And uh, so that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so let's let's talk about the comedy. Uh, I mean, starting with Toy Story, uh, the first Toy Story, uh, Pixar was known for its comedy. Even in the bad movies, they're usually still kind of laughing. Um, this one, th th this is a problem I found with Elemental, and this is the same thing I find with Inside Out too. The comedy is bland. Um, you know, if if you've ever written comedy, look, I I, I do comedy. I, I'm not a stand up, but I I have talked to people, and I do understand. The process but you know when you have comedy you have an idea hey this is this might make a great joke and then you pour over that joke you write it you rewrite it you test it uh you just and and you got the sense that that pixar had been doing that with its comedy for uh forever from, from the very beginning mm -hmm. with elemental and with this one um the comedy is just bland it, it falls flat and it feels safe um yeah, and this is this is what I imagine is going on at Pixar right now, especially in the writers' room, is that uh, when you when when I do comedy, uh, I look for that line, that that line you cross into inappropriateness. Yeah, and yeah. and then I will cross that line into inappropriateness <laughs> uh, to see if the joke works, and then if the joke works, I'll back up. And then cross, get back on the other side of that line and just take it to the moment. Uh, you know, like. My oh, I, I've money. seen you. I've seen, I've gone to your uh, improv show. Yeah, but you went to the dirty you, show. Which, you which crossed, I, Alan, you crossed the line. I know, but that was the dirty show. Of course you crossed the line. But, but the other shows, the ones I prefer performing are the family friendly shows. We have kids in our audiences. And I love, I love sneaking up to that line and figuring out, okay, how can I pull this joke off? without crossing it to where parents know what you're doing, but the kids are like, what? And, uh, <laughs> and then telling kids, just ask your parents on the ride home what, what that uh -huh. joke was about. Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a hernia check joke that I do a lot, and uh, it's just great. But, um, but the thing is, is you need to cross that line in order to know where the boundaries are, and then, and then tell the joke at the boundary there. Um, Pixar doesn't do that anymore. Uh, Pixar is safe. In fact, you know, we've become so woke that even going and crossing that line can get you canceled. You know, we saw that with, I believe it was Friends or a Seinfeld or something, where people were uncomfortable with where the writer's room was going. And you almost felt like the writer's room had to go there in order to pull back and get, get right. the real joke. Um, right. So so at Pixar, it just feels like, at Pixar at Disney, no one wants to even get close to that line. And when you can't get close to that line, when you limit your comedy, when you when you prejudge and self-censor to the point where you can't even get close to that line, your comedy suffers and becomes, it becomes bland. Um, and this movie, you know, you watch it and there are funny moments. I laughed out loud at several moments, but there are moments where you kind of smirk and you realize, oh, they could have done better with that. Um, you know, the, this, the, the whole brainstorming section, it should have been better than what it was. And I'll say that this is a movie that should have been 10 times better than it is. And I feel yeah. like that uh, that this current current wokeness, this current fear of offending, uh, is ruining comedy, and it's ruining it in children's comedy as well. Um, and so uh, I'm trying to remember that that final point I was going to make about this, but uh, you know, it's you know, uh, you just 
it, you just feel like, oh, this joke should have just paid off. Oh yeah, I, I remember because I told we talked about this during the credits, right? Um, and uh, and I said, you know, the comedy is just too safe. And then the final, then then there's a an end end credit scene that is supposed to be the big payoff punchline, and uh, and it was just like, oh, really? That's that's how you're gonna end this movie? Yeah, yeah. It was a weird. The, yeah, there is a post credit scene. There is yeah, a post credit scene. But yeah. but it, it, you know, you saw the joke, and it was like, oh, it's not like they were. It, you felt like they didn't even try. They didn't even try to yeah. come up with a good joke at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So look. It's a good movie. It's not woke. It's safe. Parents, you know, take your kids to see it. Uh, but this is, you know, it, it's like, you know, the, the, the worst, best thing. Where, where's, where's Pixar? At least they they didn't go woke with this one. Well, the worst you can say, it played it too safe. Yeah. So it's fine. I still recommend it, but it's a soft recommend. Probably a six and a half. I'll say I was looking at. Um, my local theater, I talk about a lot because no one goes to it. And uh -huh. um, they had they had five screenings yesterday. They were all about 70% full. So I, I think this good. movie's gonna do this do well this weekend. Yeah. All right. And do you recommend it? Do you have a, a yeah, I do recommend it. <laughs> I mean, but but you know, if you're looking for classic Pixar, you're not gonna get it. It's not classic Pixar.